So we're here at NYCC with Benjamin Percy, who's on Team Titans. How did you get this gig, sir? <laughs> Well, in 2009, I submitted a proposal to Vertigo, and it was rejected, but I stayed in touch with the editor, Mark Doyle, and a few years later, he offered me the opportunity to write a two-shot for Batman. So, I, the, J.P. Leone did the art on that, and I put everything I had into that, into that storyline called Terminal, and it paid off. A few months later, they called me about Green Arrow. People seemed to be enjoying what I was doing with Green Arrow, and a few months later, they called me about Teen Titans. So, as long you know, it's, everything's been cumulative. As long as I don't screw things up, I hope that you know there'll, there'll be other series and other adventures that await me. So, what's the shift like from doing Green Arrow to Teen Titans, where Green Arrow, of course, is an adult? I think the tone is a little bit different, and then going to Teen Titans, younger people still trying to find their way as heroes yeah. and people. What's the shift like? Uh, well, the big shift is writing a team book. So, from Green Arrow and focusing on his interior world and his struggles uh, to five different and soon to be six different characters and all those different conflicting personalities and all their variant desires uh, and giving them each their due. Team books are tough. And the way that I'm approaching this is to give every story arc to the focal character. It remains an ensemble, but the first arc, for instance, belongs to Damien. The emotional arc, the thematic arc of the story sort of belongs to Damien. And uh, it's also, you know, a little more lighthearted. And, uh, Teen Titans has always worked best as an adrenaline-fueled soap opera. There's plenty of danger, there's plenty of adventure, but there's also a lot of fun. <laughs> To, inter to interrupt the darkness, uh, to interrupt the spectacle. There's a lot of moments of, of repose where the characters are just getting to know each other and coming together as friends. So, yeah, there, there are major differences between the two. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing for me to have uh, that challenge and that variety when I'm at the keyboard. Now, you did mention the interplay. Can we look forward to any, not hooking up, but can we look forward to any romance between the characters? That was a big part of the, the late Bronze Age run with Marv Wolf and George Perez. As much as we were getting into the characters, we also like the interplay of those people falling in love with each other. Anything like that? Oh, coming down the plane? Absolutely. And also, I should say that you know, I'm writing Green Arrow as well as Teen Titans, and there's some possibilities there regarding the interplay, possible romantic interplay between Amico Queen and maybe somebody, maybe somebody on the Teen Titans. Now, I'm a big Superboy fan. Yeah. Superboy putting him on the team, I know, I understand. It's almost like a Justice League thing where you put Superman on the team and some people are like, so what do you need everyone else for? But uh, this is a newer Superboy, a younger Superboy. Can we expect to see him have any interaction with the team? Maybe uh, some guest stars? Probably, but I'm not going <laughs> to tell you right now. Okay, and he's keeping his word to that. Uh, aside of Team Titans and Green Arrow, is there anything else we can look forward to seeing from you in the coming months or next year? Uh, well, I just took over James Bond, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, and I'll also be doing a two-shot for Detective Comics. Uh, so Klaus Johnson is on art, and it's one of my favorite artists, that Daredevil run he did with Frank Miller in particular. Uh, you know, it's a favorite place on my bookshelf, and it's amazing to be able to work with a legend like him. What's your approach for James Bond? That's a pretty big pickup. What's your approach there? Well, James Bond is a legendary franchise, and I grew up, uh, you know, watching the movie marathons on TBS and reading the Fleming novels in college when I took a spy novel class. And I guess I'm going to be approaching it in the same way that I've approached Rebirth, in that I have a focus on the, char the legacy of the character while trying to reinvent it. Uh, you know, trying to reinvent the character and, and put my own mark on it. But, you know, Rebirth is all about uh, the heart of the characters. And, and, you know, James Bond is very cool, but he's also very cold. And I'm interested in figuring out who he is that's made him so guarded. Uh, because he's gone through some stuff. He's a dark dude. And uh, it's not just going to be about the nifty gadgets and the action set pieces. It will be about that, of course, and the dangerous seductions and the colorful villains. It will be about all that, but it will also be about who is this man. 
and Bond girls. We'll, we'll see some Bond girls. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. So, are Green Arrow and Teen Titans on the same type of schedule as the rest of the Rebirth books, where they're coming out bi-monthly? Teen Titans is not bi-monthly. Okay, so that's how you're I'm able to manage it. <laughs> uh, Green Arrow is coming out bi-monthly, and you know, Teen Titans is once a month, and it, you know, having having those three issues, I, I like the I like the balance of that. Well, thank you very much for your time. Very much. Thank Pleasure. you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for getting the word out.